Before we finish this chapter, I just want to take a couple of minutes to talk about how we can throw our own custom errors inside the asynchronous function if we want to reject the promise that this returns. So currently, if there's some kind of error when we use this JSON method, for example, if the JSON is not valid JSON, then this is going to reject the promise and it's going to return that rejection so that we can catch it down here. So if I say catch and then get the error over here and inside this function, we'll just say console.log, we'll say rejected and then after that, we'll do the error. So I'll say error like so. This is going to work. So if I now save this, currently we don't get an error because everything's fine, but if there's a problem with the JSON when we try to pass it, then it will result in an error. So let me just make this not valid JSON. I'm going to take away the quotes around the property text, save it, and now we can see right here rejected and we get an error. Now this is going to be an error object. So what we can do is use the error.message property to get an error message and we can see unexpected token t in json at position six so that is the error and because we get a rejection here this is rejected the promise returned by the whole function and therefore in the catch method we can catch that error and we can log it to the console so that is if there's a problem with the json right here now let me just make that right again oops what have i done here okay let's do that, save it, and if now we do an error over here, so for example, we try to go to Luigi's instead of Luigi, then this right here is still gonna try and fetch that, and even though this resource doesn't exist, it doesn't actually reject the promise returned by this. We saw that in one of the previous tutorials. When we use the fetch method, if there's a problem with the resource we pass in, i.e. we spell it incorrectly or something, and that resource doesn't exist, then this does not reject, the promise does not reject, it still resolves. So if we save this right now and come over here, we still get an error, but this time it's saying rejected and it's saying there's still an error in the JSON. Now that's not true, there's not a problem in the JSON anymore, it's just because this is still resolving and it's still giving us a response, but then when we try to use the JSON on that response, because the response is not valid really, it's not been found, then it's throwing some kind of error over here instead and it's rejecting this promise. So to combat this, we're gonna have to manually check if the response object has a status of 200, or rather check that it doesn't have one, because if it doesn't have a status of 200, then we can throw our own error to combat this. So then what I'm gonna do is come underneath here and I'm gonna say if response, which is what we get back from the fetch, if the status property of that is not equal to 200, then we're gonna throw our own error so that this doesn't continue down here and we don't get an error from this. We're just catching this error as it happens. So what I'm gonna do in this case is say throw new error like so. So if we want to throw our own error at some point, this is the syntax we use. We use the throw keyword, then we use new error. Now this syntax should be quite familiar. We're just creating a new error object. So this throws a new error, and when we throw a new error inside an asynchronous function, the promise returned by this asynchronous function is rejected. And therefore, if it's rejected, we're gonna catch it right here and we can catch this error that we've just thrown. Now in here, we can pass in an error message. So I'm just gonna say, cannot fetch the data. And now that will be the message property on the error object. So let me save this and see if it works. And now we can see rejected, cannot fetch the data. So we get this error now, instead of the JSON error, when there's a problem with the resource URL. And that's much better. So that's pretty much it as far as asynchronous JavaScript goes. We're now pretty well equipped to go out and start fetching data from external sources so that we can use that data in our applications. Now we're gonna put this newfound knowledge to very good use in the next chapter where we're gonna make a weather forecast app. Now again, I know this chapter has been probably a tough one, so if you feel like you need to watch some of the videos again, 
please do. I know that eventually after some practice, this whole idea of asynchronous code and the tools we use for it will sink in.